Hey, hey friends. Oh my gosh, it's been such a long time since I've gone live. It's been like a month and I'm so excited to be on with you guys. And when I hit the go live button, it was so funny. It said that 4,900 and something friends were online. <laughs> I highly doubt it, but that's super funny. So what a great time to go live when basically everybody, everybody, everybody is online. I mean, I don't know. I mean, prayers for Florida and the Bahamas. Actually, I just got off a team call and we've got a huge team, a huge group um, out in Florida and also in the Bahamas and they are just getting hammered right now. So um, obviously first and foremost for them, if you are in that area, stay safe, stay dry. Hopefully you guys are uh, boarded up and prepped and all of that fun stuff. I know that um, some of you guys who live out that way, it's really funny. I've got some friends who are kind of like, you know, it's just like another Monday <laughs> for a lot of them. Um, but hopefully you're all staying safe out there. Um, so I just got off of one of our team calls and we do Zooms on Monday nights and I wanted to share this because we talked for a good 45 minutes about this topic and I wanted to give you like a brief synopsis of this because I feel like this is probably not just in my company, not just on my team and really not just in network marketing. I feel like probably a lot of you guys who are entrepreneurs probably have felt like at some point that you are literally out of people to talk to, <laughs> that you've talked to everybody about your business, that um, no one is catching on, that everyone is ghosting you and all of that. And I wanted to kind of bring this outside of my team page to share this, um, just like a brief version with you guys, because I am sure you've been there. Like I have been there so many different times and it, being an entrepreneur, being in network marketing is kind of like a roller coaster, right? It's like sometimes you feel like, oh my gosh, everybody wants my thing, everybody's joining my team. And then you could literally talk to one person who tells you no or who ghosts you or blows you off. And now all of a sudden the gut feeling is like, oh, this is not working. Everything's going bad. No one wants this. My business sucks. Like all of that, right? So here's what I would recommend is if, if you are in network marketing, if you are in direct sales, share this. This is probably something your team needs to hear because quite honestly, whether they're telling you about it or not, they have at some point felt like they have literally run out of contacts. They don't know who else to talk to. They feel like they've already hit the bottom of their list. So share this out. And if you do share it out, let me know so I can give you a shout out. I love to say hi to you guys. Um, if you guys share, if you are new to my videos, type new below. I'd love to say hello to you. If you're catching this on replay, just tell me replay below. Um, okay, so one of the things that we were talking about in our, our team Zoom is, first of all, you haven't really run out of people. <laughs> okay, let me just, uh, like, the end, the end game here, the end chapter is you haven't run out of people. Usually what happens when you start feeling like you've run out of people to talk to, it's that your brain has gotten into a point where you you're telling yourself there's no one else to talk to not that you've run out of people it's just that you've run out like to the end of your own personal limits okay so let me share why that happens the first thing i'm going to tell you this is kind of like a hack okay this is something that i learned um really just even a few years ago i read a book called uh, uh, by mel robbins called the five second rule have y'all read that it is seriously so good it's kind of like all through the book you're gonna be like well duh um but dude it is seriously such a good book if you are an entrepreneur especially if you're the type of entrepreneur where you're in direct sales or network marketing any type of person who has to contact other people or put yourself out there in some way if you're an entrepreneur where you've got to put yourself out there asking for someone to hire you for a gig, or if you're a freelance artist and you're asking people to put your artwork out there, I don't care what it is, it applies to you to where your brain literally is designed to protect you from harm, okay? It's kind of miraculous if you think about it. Your brain is literally designed to keep you away from the edge, to keep you from feeling, and when I say to protect you from harm, here's what that means. It means feeling rejection, feeling like a bruised ego, feeling like somebody is telling you no and that hurts your feelings. The feeling of sadness, the feeling of 
failure. That, those things hurt, whether it's emotionally. I know like some of you dudes are like, that doesn't hurt me. Yeah, it does. Like to some extent, your ego, when it gets bruised, when you feel rejection, that affects you in some type of way. And your brain is designed to protect you from that. And your brain is so smart and so divinely wired that when it starts to get even an inkling that you're going to go beyond your comfort zone and that you could put possibly potentially hear the word no, <laughs> your brain is gonna be like, whoa, 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 back up. I think you should not talk to that person because whatever. That's when you start getting into the phase of, have you ever heard like not to prejudge people? The, the thing that happens is you're not doing that on purpose. You're not prejudging them on purpose. To your own mind, you sound totally justified and correct in like, oh, listen, like they don't have the money to buy this product. Um, oh, they're super busy. They could not even fit one more thing onto their calendar. Like she's got 11 kids and already runs a business and there's no way I shouldn't even talk to her about this because she's way too busy. Oh no, you know, I mean, she teaches pre-K and she's just come home and she's whipped and she doesn't have any time to do this and she volunteers a lot at church. Um, no way would she have time to do this business. Oh, she's already super fit and super lean and super athletic. There's no way she wouldn't want a health and wellness product. No way. Are you kidding? You're prejudging them, but in your own mind, you're literally saving time. You're saving them from having to put you and them in an awkward position by telling you no. In your mind, you're justifying it. But here's what's actually happening. This is like mind blowing. What's actually happening when you prejudge someone is your brain has already skipped ahead what they th what it thinks is going to happen if this happens and then this happens and then so we shouldn't do this. Your brain has already calculated all of the what ifs and has given you in a split second, your brain has already given you nine reasons <laughs> not to reach out to so-and-so about whatever, your business, your product, your service, whatever, because of all the reasons that honestly are, are valid reasons. But here's the reality. If you stay in that mode where you are limiting someone else's opportunity to either feel better, sleep better, I don't know, save money on their electric bill, whatever your service is, save money on their cleaning products, use healthier products around their home, use cleaner living products without all the parabens and nonsense in it um, to save money on whatever, right? If you prejudge them and don't share your product or your service or your business with them, you are literally cutting them at the knees and stopping them. You're robbing them of not even giving them the opportunity to decide if it's good or not for them. Some people just need someone, they need you to go and say, hey, are you open to checking this out? Hey, have you ever thought of doing something like this? Hey, are you in the market to whatever, whatever, whatever your product is or does? Something that serves them. Who are we? to decide for them that this is not for them. Like, how rude, right? Like, and here's the question I ask you, and then I would love for you to share with your teams and ask them, or have share this in, the, in your team page or whatever, and, and let me ask them. I wanna ask you, look me in my eye, and tell me the truth. When you started your business, was it the perfect time for you to start your business? Were you in the perfect place financially? Were you in the perfect place mentally did you have all the free time in the whole world and you just needed something to like become a hobby because <laughs> you were so bored out of your mind? Or did you join and start your business at a time that probably wasn't perfect, but someone gave you an opportunity to make that decision for yourself? When you started a product that you love, maybe you're a customer, when you started using the products, was it at a perfect time? You, like you had all the disposable income that you could ever do. Like you are a gazillionaire and you were just looking for a place to throw away your money that day. And when the person reached out to you, you were like, oh, thank goodness they reached out to me because I really feel like tossing money out the window today. No, no one is in that position. I don't care how much money you make. You don't have so much disposable income that you're willing to just literally throw it away, right? People buy what they find value in. So. If you've run out of people to talk to, odds are you have people on your list that you would talk to if you knew 
A hundred percent. Thank you so much, Marcy. If you knew a hundred percent their answer was going to be yes, who would you add to your list? If you knew a hundred percent guaranteed you, if you message them right now, right now on Facebook messenger, you got on there and you prospected them and you asked if they were open to taking a look at whatever your business or your product and a hundred percent guaranteed. I can like, I'm your fairy godmother and I could just wave a magic wand and a hundred percent guarantee they're going to say yes. Who would you ask? So if you've got people on your list that you know a hundred percent, you would ask if the answer was yes, why aren't you asking them if you think it might be no? So odds are you have people you could talk to about your business. You do, you have people, but you're not talking to them because you think you know what their answer might possibly be. And that my friend, that's prejudging. So let me just, let's just say for some reason, okay, I'll throw you a bone. Let's just say for some reason, you really have contacted every single person on your friends list. Okay, so like, look at your Facebook friends list. We're on Facebook. Look at your Facebook friends list. How many friends do you have on Facebook? I would venture to say you probably have more than 100 friends on Facebook, right? Okay, so if you have more than 100 friends on Facebook, have you actually talked to all of your friends on Facebook about your product or your business? Now, it, ha wishing happy birthday is great, but that is not talking to them about your business talking to them about their dog or their, you know, how's the weather out there or whatever. That's, that's great, but that's not talking to them about, the, about your business. Okay. So have you actually talked to every single person about your business? No, you have not, <laughs> but let's just take it a step further. Maybe you have, I don't know. I'm not in your Facebook. Maybe you actually have talked to the, every single person about your business. So how do you find new people? Okay. The first thing I want to share with you, I'm going to give you guys actually where to go to find new people to talk to. Okay, so like if you're just like, you are like racking your brain, I don't even know who else to talk to, there, nobody exists anymore, I need new people. <clears throat> I'm gonna actually tell you where to go to find new people, okay, so bear with me. But first I wanna tell you two things. One, when you place so much weight on someone's out outcome, like for example, if you just, when you started your business and you just knew, like you're making a list, right, of like your warm market, your sponsor probably said, like make a list of a few people who you know, that trust you, that know you like you and trust you, you know, the low hanging fruit, people that you know, like, um, you know, it's only a couple hundred bucks, who would order from you just because it's you, right? Like those types of people. Odds are, you probably reached out to some of those people and they didn't say yes. That happens, okay? So if, you have people like that, that you put on your list who were your warm market. They're your real friends. They're your family. They're people that know you, like you, and trust you. They were people that you were kind of counting on. Um, and those people, if they don't take action right away yet, and they told you no, or maybe they just ghosted you, or they keep changing the subject, or whatever, right? You didn't get the outcome that you wanted. Even though that's only one person, that person feels like 50. So let's just be real, okay? You probably have somebody that you've talked to about your business or your product and you like just felt like a kick in the freaking stomach when they said no, right? Because you were just like, what? That's like my best friend. <laughs> if she doesn't do it, nobody's gonna do it. It feels, the weight of that no feels like the weight of 50 people, does it not? Have you ever felt that? Like I know like when I talk to somebody and I know darn well, my product is exactly what the doctor ordered. Like they need it, they should be on it. I know it would solve a lot of their issues, like hello. Um, but it, they're just not there yet, right? They just, they're not, they don't get it yet. And especially if that person is close to me, like I am invested in them, I know them like in real life, like not just on Facebook, but like I know them, know them, and they know me, and they know I'm not some weird scam artist, like hello, and they still tell you no. That sucks. Like seriously, it feels like 50 people might as well have just told you no all at one time, right? Um, so you have to know and keep reminding yourself that's still just one person. That's one person and, and please remember, that one person has only said no right now. I literally told my sponsor, I was sharing this with my team today, I literally told my sponsor no to this business, to this product for two years. Y'all, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. 
I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a bunch of ho hocus pocus. Like I had seen it all and been there and done that. And you know, me with my angel wings and hoity toity, right? Like, oh, I know what that is. No, I didn't. I didn't have a freaking clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I told her no for two years. Two years. Now, here's the thing one, she kept asking and kept following up, not in a weird, spammy, ugly, yicky way, right? But she was just, she was just, hey, are, do you want it yet? Are you open yet? Like every couple months, literally for two years straight. Okay, so first of all, are you going to stay with it for that long? Most people don't. Most people, I'll just be real, most people quit and don't hang with it after the first like two months of getting a couple rejections here and there. Like honestly, they just don't, they don't stick with it long enough. They're not consistent enough. They're not like following up enough. She followed up literally, like we calculated over two years, she was following up with me so much. It was like 23 times. Are you going to follow up with people and stay offering and leading by example? Are you gonna show up consistently actively in your business so much though that people are drawn to you so much for two years most people don't like i'm pretty sure that like when you hear people say oh most money most people don't make money in network marketing yeah because most people quit too early <laughs> that's like if you just make up your mind to do, to do it and show up you're it's kind of impossible not to have business happen like if you're doing the right thing for long enough it's going to happen okay so one person may feel like 50. I wanna share with you guys, so y'all know I've got two kids. Um, my husband and I have been married for 25 years now. Um, and right now, our, our son is 22, our daughter is 20 years, okay? So when, she, my, when my daughter, who's our second born, um, she's our youngest, when she was about two, so first of all, when she was a baby, um, <clears throat> she, she was on the bottle, okay, and she like, I'm so sorry if she watches this because like I apologize in advance McKenna, but she like projectile vomited her bottle every single time we fed her. It was like, it got to be to the point where it was amusing because seriously, it was like all across the room, like <laughs> seriously. And then when she was off the bottle and she was on people food, like adult food, right? Um, thank you, Adrienne. Um, when she was off the bottle and eating normal people food, she was about two years old, and I remember going to her well check um, at the pediatrician's office, and I was super concerned. She was really little, and I was literally at the pediatrician's office, and I said, my baby's starving. She's never eating. She literally never eats. So I told the pediatrician straight up, she never eats. She does not eat anything. And he said, nothing? And I said, zero. She's not eating. She hasn't eaten in like three months, <laughs> okay? How does this relate to your business? When a couple people tell you no, it's nobody's ordering. Nobody's doing this. Everybody's saying no. No one is doing, everybody's falling off. Everybody's canceling their orders. Everybody's dropping out of the team. No one in my, I've heard this a couple times. Nobody in my whole state, like, North Carolina, the, just the economics in North Carolina or whatever, whatever state, I don't, I've heard it from like all over the place. Oh, the whole, everybody here is just in a weird mindset of like, nobody wants to spend money here. Like the whole state? Yes, the whole state. No, listen, <laughs> a whole state, and you're talking millions and millions and millions of people. You cannot tell me you've literally asked every single person and every person has said no, no. It's just that you've, you've talked to enough people that you put enough expectations on that your expectations make it feel like everybody's saying no. So like me going into the pediatrician, I'm telling the pediatrician, she hasn't eaten in three months. She hasn't eaten anything? No, she has not eaten anything, zero food. And the pediatrician, he gave me some really profound advice that I've remembered and I've carried with me for 18 years in my business now. He said, Listen, first of all, if she hadn't really eaten anything at all in three months, she'd be dead. Okay, so like, you're exaggerating. You're a little bit of a drama queen. And I'm like, oh, me? So that was the first thing he said. The second thing he said stuck with me for so long. I have taught my team this over and over and over, and I wanna share it with you guys. He said, are you, you know, as a parent, your job is to provide shelter and food and love and water, warmth, you know, the basic needs, right? 
<clears throat> and he said, I was a young mom, okay? I was 21 when I had her. Um, and he said, are you offering her food at least three to five times a day? Are you offering her food? And I said, yes. Uh, probably, probably in good being, I said yes, right? Like nowadays they call CPS or whatever. Okay, so, so yes. Are you offering her food three to five times a day? Yes. Is it good nutritious food? Yes. Then you're doing a good job, mama. That's what he said to me. He said, it is not your job to decide when she is hungry. That's her job. Your job is to offer the food so that when she is hungry, she's going to eat. That was so profound for me. And as I've been building my business over the years and teaching people how to build their business and how to overcome that feeling where it feels like in your heart, oh, everyone is telling me no. No one is signing up. This whole state is, you know, the economy is bad. No one has the right mindset. When it's that whole all or nothing thing that we all go through, you guys, remember this because your job, if you're in network marketing, your job is to offer it. Are you offering the thing? Are you offering it consistently? Meaning in a nutritious way, are you being consistent? Are you being authentic? Are you being real? Are you showing up and you're showing your heart? Are you serving them or is it all about you? Are you asking questions so that you can learn how to serve them and give them what they need? That's what I would, you know, metaphorically, that's what I would say would be nutritious food. Are you offering the right thing? If so, and you're doing it consistently, you know, for, for feeding a human, it's three to five times a day, offer food, especially if they're having a hard time eating, right? Are you showing up every freaking day in your business? Are you consistent? If so, you're doing a good job. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. It is not your job to decide when they're hungry. It is only your job to show up with the food and to be ready when they are. So. The first question I have for you is if you've run out of people to talk to, are you showing up and are you being dramatic? Like me in the pediatrician's office, are you being like, ah, the sky's falling, nobody's joining, everybody's saying no. Okay, so like check yourself first before you say you really run out of people to talk to. But in some cases, you know, some of you guys are like beast mode and you're for real, like you really actually are running out of people to talk to. Like your contact list is like all the way thinned down. So let me give you some actual tangible things that you can write down, okay? And if you're finding value in this, share this out. If you have people in network marketing or in entrepreneurs who are who follow you on Facebook, provide value to them and hit the share button. Um, if you have team pages, this would be great for them too. If y'all need your teams to hear this analogy, like y'all seriously, hit the share button and they will love you for this. This has stuck with me for so long and it's always a really good like self pep talk when I need it. Um, okay, so where to find new people? So <clears throat> first and foremost, let's talk about online first, okay? So we're all here on Facebook. Facebook, y'all, first of all, your friends list, that's the first, and those people are already connected to you. Those people have already said yes to you. <laughs> so let's start there. Let's start with the like low hanging fruit. These people have already said yes to you to connect to you on Facebook, okay? So start there, start on your Facebook friends list. Here's the thing, you've gotta to give to get. So I am more likely to do business and be a customer of someone who engages in my stuff, likes and comments, shares stuff, you know, like engages with me, sends me messages, whatever, like it, you got to give to get. Do you not notice that? Like when people keep showing up on your, on your Facebook lives and they share your stuff or they're commenting or they're giving you that heart button or showing you some love, like tapping it or whatever, um, you are more likely to go to their Facebook page and reciprocate, right? Relationships are reciprocal, okay? So if you are looking to gain something from those connections, give something first, right? <clears throat> so start with your Facebook friends list. Engage and you know stuff like that on, on their list. Don't just go into their inbox and say, hey, you know, I sell this really cool widget and would you like to buy the widget and blah, blah, blah. Like you're not even having a conversation first. Have a relationship with them. That could be a whole nother, a whole nother training. Um, <clears throat> but have a conversation with them. Ask questions. 
ask questions, engage in their staff. If, if they posted a picture of their kids going back to school, um, comment on it and then send them a quick message saying, hey, you know, I saw it was your youngest first day of college. How are you hanging in there? You know, or, oh my gosh, you know, you're empty nester now. That's huge. Like, how are you guys doing? Ask questions about their stuff. Here's the reality. Um, the more you ask questions and the more you actually engage with people, they will eventually tell you exactly what you need to know to ask them if they're open to your product or your business. The more you ask them, they will tell you exactly what you need to know. And sometimes it's not the right time to ask them if they're open to it. Sometimes it's the perfect time. You're going to only learn this by doing it though. You're gonna only learn this by practice. So start with your Facebook friends list and connect with all of them with the intention, with the mindset of just honest, authentic connection. No ulterior motives like, oh, I'm gonna wait to go for the jugular. Like, don't, don't look at it like that, right? Look at just to connect with them. The next place you can go outside of your friends list is groups. Now, Facebook groups, there, there's a gazillion of them, so don't get lost in this rabbit hole. Um, but you can go up to the top of Facebook, or if you're on your device, your mobile device, on the sidebar right there, there's groups and then there's also like Discover. You can go join Facebook groups, and sometimes Facebook will actually recommend groups that it thinks that you'd like based on what you talk about in your messenger and what you post about and who you're friends with. They use all of that mumbo jumbo and spit out groups that it thinks you might like. Facebook is super creepy, but use it to your advantage, right? Like to see if there's groups out there that you might want to join. So join interest groups. If you're into knitting, join groups about knitting. If you're into weightlifting, if you um, just got into Pilates, join a group that's all for like beginners starting their workouts. Like y'all can be sore together and post funny memes and like all this kind of, there's a group for everything. If you're into gardening, if you're into bird watching, if you live in the country, if you live in the city, Seriously, there's a group for everything. So whatever your hobbies and your interests are outside of your business, join some groups that are specific for those, okay? Now, when you're in those groups, you're not prospecting, you're not spamming your link, you're not being one of those. Like, hey, I saw you were in the group and we have like-minded interests and are you open to checking out this four minute video and here's my link. And it's like, ew, no, don't do that. Um, so in those groups though, you're having conversations. You're literally, you're commenting on people's stuff. You're liking on their stuff. Go to their Facebook profile. Hopefully their Facebook stuff is public. Like it needs to be public. Um, but if, the, if their stuff is public, like their pictures, like their profile picture, like their cover photo, leave a comment, send them a message saying, um, I sent you a friend request. We're both in the Pilates group. Um, I'm just starting. How long have you been doing Pilates? Ask questions, right? So the more you get people talking to you, um, both on the online and in Messenger, the more likely you are to actually develop a real connection, a real friendship. Um, so of course, groups. Now let's talk about like garage sale groups. Okay, so garage sale groups are, garage sale groups are really hard because garage sale groups, yes, there's a lot of people and yes, they're in your area, but garage sale groups, you have to determine, are is that your target demographic? Is that the person that you're really looking for? Can you serve people in those groups? A lot of times when people are in those garage sale groups, like the buy, sell, trade, they're looking for something super duper cheap. Um, and they're usually, they have rules about like network marketing and stuff like that. So you need to befriend the admin of those groups, connect with the admins. Um, <clears throat> and in those groups, you really need to find out the rules of those groups. Like that's a huge one. Do not get kicked out of those groups because you're prospecting people in those groups when that's not allowed. So, but you, there's nothing wrong with having conversations, like actual conversations that just happen to lead to whatever you're doing, right? But buy, sell, trade, those groups that are like local in your hometown, that kind of stuff, those are good places to meet people, to have relationships with, to, to build connections with. It's just networking, right? So in terms of networking, you can also go offline. Obviously, um, you can do networking meetings. Um, that was a huge part of my life for a really long time. A lot of you guys I actually met through w uh, women's networking events. Um, they're in like local communities, whether it's your chamber of commerce, there's BNI, there's LATIP, um, there's, uh, I was president of the Heartlink Women's Network for almost nine years. Um, I guarantee you, if there's a major city next to you, there's networking events taking place. You could go to meetup.com. 
um, and find networking groups. You could probably just go to Google and say networking groups in and then whatever your zip code or your, or your city. Go find real people. Here's the thing, like are you in health and wellness? You need to be going to farmer's markets. Like, hello, people. if you're in health and wellness, all the people who go to farmer's markets are obviously not at the grocery store, they're at the farmer's market. That's your ideal. Like, so you need to be out there and you're not, you're not handing out flyers and business cards at those things. You're going to meet people. You're going to network with people. Um, same thing with um, like the uh, trade shows. You guys, it's fall, um, but if you're watching this at like on a replay later time, I don't care what season it is, if it's spring, summer, fall, winter, whatever, there's probably a trade show or craft fair or something in your area. Um, go to those events and here's the thing, like I used to sell Pamper Chef, right? So back in the day, we did a lot of like um, bridal expos, like bridal shows and stuff like that. And Lord have mercy, like we, first of all, we would pay hundreds of dollars to, to buy a table and then we'd be stuck behind the table and we wouldn't get to meet anybody unless they came to us. So a better way for you and your teams to do this is go to those expos, go to those craft fairs, go to those events. Um, if you have a shirt or something that's like where they would recognize the name of your, you know, thing, you could wear that. I would recommend not. I would just go to go. Go to be just another person in the community, but go as an attendee. First of all, it's free. So if you're new to your business or you just don't want to spend money on advertising and stuff, go attend those events and go with the purpose of networking. Go bop around to each of their vendor tables. And here's the key, you guys. When you're stopping by those events, um, tables, those vendors, stop by and actually have authentic, real conversations with these people, okay? So like if you are, if you're stopping by somebody's table and their table is really well done, they've got a great presentation, they've got a great display, stop and compliment them and tell them, wow, I had to stop and see what you sell because seriously, your table is so, well set up like you are really organized you have one of the best tables at this whole place um compliment them that's a genuine compliment look for something to say to them that's complimentary but also starts a conversation so good questions that you could ask vendor um, vendors at those types of events is um are you going to be here all weekend um how early did you have to get up to set up this amazing display have you been here since like the crag of dawn Get those conversations going, right? So like you could even ask them, um, is this the only way that you grow your business or do you also do stuff online? You are literally having conversations with them that eventually, if you talk to them enough and ask them enough questions, like you're just interested in what they're doing, they are going to give you exactly what you need to know in order to serve them in the best way. So what I mean by that is like, imagine you're talking to somebody and they're tired already. It's only Friday afternoon and they've got two more days of this to go and their feet hurt and they're not sleeping very well. Their back hurts. They're low on energy and you happen to sell a product that gives better energy. Hello. Do you not think that that's a good connection for them? But here's the thing. Go to those events. I personally go to those events for networking purposes only, just to build rapport and to build connection. I purposefully don't get business cards or carry flyers or whatever with me for two reasons. One, I don't want it to look like, oh yeah, let me whip it out. I was, I was hoping you would ask. Like, ew, th don't do that. You shouldn't have your business cards in your fanny pack like at an expo thing, right? You're just there to connect with people. Um, so instead, go to those events with your phone and when you're having a conversation with them, you know, kind of do that whole retract thing of like, hey, can I take your card? I'd love to connect with you. Um, oh, and by the way, hey, are you on Facebook? Hand them your phone and tell them to find you on your own phone. Tell them to find you on Facebook and send you a friend request. Like, like actually take their phone and find you on Facebook and send you a friend request and you can have their you can have your phone in your hands right there and literally accept their friend request right then and there that way you're not having to wait for them like hopefully she remembers my name and she sends me a friend request no ask them to do that like right now can i see your phone okay i'm gonna i'm gonna find myself on facebook and i'm gonna send a friend request okay and i'm gonna accept your friend request um 
and then say, hey, I know that you're busy. Let me let you get back to your table. I wanna do some more shopping around here too. Um, is it okay if I send you a Facebook message later on or text you, um, right? So you're just leaving that connection open. You're not being like, rah, like scary network marketer. You're just building a connection, right? But now you've met more people. Now, tomorrow or later on that night, you can go back and message them and say, hey, Susie, um, and here's a really great tip. When you're at those expos as an attendee, wear something that is an attention getter, a red scarf, um, a baseball cap with whatever, the Cubs on it, whatever your sports team is, and then bring that into the conversation somehow. A pin, a brooch, um, a really fluorescent shirt, something that they will remember, right? So that when you go back tomorrow or the next day or whatever, and you say, hey, Susie, like on Messenger, um, hey, we met yesterday at the expo, remembering they've probably met 500 people that day. I was the one with the neon green shirt and the red scarf. I don't know, that's bad fashion, don't wear that, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so the, the, it's a memory jogger, they're gonna know who you were, right? Um, hey, uh, it was so great to meet you. Again, your table was so awesome. I was so excited to see how you made those candles. That's totally fascinating. Um, I'd love to connect with you. I think I've got a friend who wants something. Like you can have a conversation, right? You can have a, ask, them, ask them how long they've been doing that. Um, what did they do before that? Did they have to go to special training to do that? Like you're asking them questions and, and being interested in what they're doing, okay? So enough about expos. Um, the other thing is work. Okay, now listen. This might not be a popular opinion, don't quit your full-time day job just because you're doing well in network marketing right away, okay? Because you will find that if you work full-time or you're volunteering or whatever, <clears throat> your network continuously expands because you can talk to more and more and more people. So I would not quit your day job right away as long as you're showing up for work, like who do I get to meet today, right? Who do I get to serve today? You shouldn't be going into work tomorrow. I know y'all, it's coming after a four day weekend, but don't go into work tomorrow going, ugh, I have to go to work. Go into work tomorrow saying, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to meet, who can I meet new today? Who, what kind of conversations can I start today? Who needs what I have? How can I have more conversations that's going to help me serve this person better? If you just flip your mindset a little bit, the whole thing changes. So don't quit your day job until you squeeze that lemon like till it's dry, right? Like you'll know when the juice isn't worth the squeeze anymore, <laughs> right? So you'll know when it's not worth showing up to work because what you're doing could far out exceed what you're doing in your network marketing business, okay? You'll know when it's that time, but a lot of times I feel like people quit their jobs too early um, because they could leverage their the connections, the peopling, all of that kind of stuff a lot more than they usually do. Um, okay, so let me wrap this up and I'll, I'll share with you guys um, a couple things that I want you to do if you really truly are feeling like overwhelmed where you've reached the bottom of your list and you really don't know who else to talk to, go to networking events in person. Check out to see who do you know at work. Um, go to city functions, like go to city functions and meet people, like um, whatever, whatever is going on in your city. A lot of times cities have like what's happening around town. Go to things, get outside, join a gym, join a book club. We've got an online book club, you can join that, but honestly, most libraries, most public libraries have book clubs. Go out there and meet people face to face. Um, if you have like coffee clubs or something like that, like get out there. There's probably, there's probably like a bunco group that you can join. Get out there and meet more people. Okay. So face-to-face -face. online, join groups. It's just like face-to-face, -face, but join groups online. There's 2.4 billion people on Facebook. Okay. That's not even including all the other platforms, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram has 1 billion people on Instagram. You are not out of people. You're not. It's impossible to be out of people because every single day there's more and more people turning 18. <laughs> so you're never going to run out of people. What people do run out of is steam. They just run out of steam because they're tired of hearing no, they're tired of hearing objections, and they're just tired. And so they say, oh, I'm out of, talk I'm out of people to talk to. No, they're not. They're just out of steam. So recalibrate, if that's you, 
It's normal, first of all, I want you to know, it's normal to feel that way. You are not alone. Um, you are not some anomaly where you're bad at this. That's not what this means. If you feel like that, if you feel like you've run out of people to talk to and that you know this whole thing sucks right now, I want, I don't know if like your sponsor is telling you this or whatever, you, this is not abnormal. This is a normal thing to go through. The difference between a beginner and somebody who's really making it, like somebody that you look up to in your business, the only difference between you and them is that they go through the same thing that you're going through right now. It's just that they have figured out how to flip that switch of the limited mindset to a success mindset of, I know people are out there, I just have to find them. Versus the limited mindset of, I've talked to everybody and everybody's saying no and nobody wants to do this. The whole all or nothing thing, right? That's where the amateur normally is and that's normal. The successful person simply has made it to where they can shift very quickly, like a millisecond, into having that thought, but immediately switching it to, oh no, 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 no. I know they're out there and people want what I got. I got a great product, I got a great business, I got a great team. There is someone out there who wants this. There are a lot of people out there who want this, who need this, they're praying for this right now. I just have to find them. I just have to keep offering the food. And it's not my job. It's like, it's not my job to decide when they say yes. It's not your job when they order. It's not your job when they sign up. And, and it is not your job, team leaders, to determine how much they do. It's not your job. It's your job to offer it. It is not your job how well they do, how successful they are, how much product they buy, how many people they refer, how long they take your product. None of that is your job. Your job is to offer the opportunity to do so and to continue to offer the support and the tools to keep them engaged. That, if you're doing that, you're doing a good job. Now what you need to do is keep doing more and more and more because they're out there, you guys. It's, it's just a treasure hunt, right? So I hope you found this helpful. Thank you guys so much for tuning into my videos. I really appreciate it. And I love all the shares. Thank you so much. I'll go back and comment. Thank you guys so much. I saw so many people sharing, but I was talking a mile a minute. If you shared this into your team page because you found it helpful, would you please let me know below? And if you tap my face, um, you're gonna see three dots on one of these corners where you can follow and get notifications So the next time I go live you can catch it from the very beginning instead of having to rewind from the thing And um, I appreciate that so much those of you who watch the replays and share my videos. I really do appreciate it I hope this helps you Educates you inspires you you can do it. You're not starving. You just gotta keep offering. Okay. I love you guys Thank you guys and to those of you in Florida Bahamas stay safe stay dry I'm praying for you guys and um, I'll see you guys on another video. Bye y'all